uh, I have put these slides uh, not for the purpose uh, of uh, repeating uh, what mappers, combiners, and partitioners, and shuffle and sort, sort are, or, or for that matter, things on this next slide as well. Uh, the very purpose of uh, putting this slide is only to uh, make you thinking in terms of the tools which MapReduce provide, and these are these are actually the building blocks around which most of the design patterns are built. So I'm not going to belabor you with the details about these two slides. Uh, just just uh, just put it for the purpose so that you have in front of you uh, a picture of uh, how this uh, whole framework works. Uh, and this is this is important because, for example, if you look at uh, uh, the blocks here, which is meant for the sort. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, the important thing about it is, is uh, you can uh, provide your own uh, comparators to these sorts. So you can provide your raw raw comparators as far as uh, uh, the sorting which happens uh, uh, on on the mapper side is concerned, and on the reduce side, the the group sorts. Uh, uh, Sorter. So uh, the thing is, you can provide your own comparators to that, and the effect of that uh, turns into you having an algorithm which helps you do uh, secondary sorting. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it's very important uh, for you to understand each of these blocks properly and uh, how you can use these in different ways. So let's. Uh, uh, so this is. Uh, so now you start with why you actually require design patterns. Uh, so uh, uh, we want to broach this topic with a sorting example. I'm not going to uh, give you a code for the sorting example here, but just uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, starting a discussion around why you require MapReduce design patterns. So uh, if you have, for example, you're sorting on a single machine, you're doing a million record sort. Then of course, quick sort and merge sort are the algorithms you will definitely go ahead and use immediately. But now the problem is, if you have a data which is one trillion, of course you cannot sort that on a single machine. You will require a parallel computing framework like MapReduce. But the question is, can you directly use quick sort over here on the on this framework? The answer uh, is no, because. Uh, uh, the, the very structure of this uh, MapReduce framework would not allow you to do that. Uh, uh, saying that I won't allow you to do that is, is wrong, but uh, for example, see, uh, 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 any of these uh, quick sort, merge sort algorithms uh, will require an iterative processing of the data set. Okay, now if you look at MapReduce as a framework, you start with the mapper, you reach the reducer, and that's it. Okay, so one, one iteration you do, uh, your job is is complete. Uh, so uh, you have to look of look for uh, innovative ways of using what this framework provides to be able to implement different standard algorithms on on this framework. Uh, also, uh, from the perspective of uh, the limitations which uh, uh, the framework forces on you, so, so that you you cannot go ahead and use uh, the mappers or the reducer in the way that you want to. Uh, for example, uh, uh, any synchronization that has to happen across the processing which has been done by these mappers and the reducer stage, there is only one stage where you can do that. That is the shuffle and sort. Apart from that, uh, in 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 most of the other stages, all these jobs are all all these uh, mappers, reducers, or any other uh, uh, process is running uh, completely independent of each other. So so that forces. Uh, independence in the sense that you don't have much of a control. Okay, uh, so uh, that kind of uh, uh, tells us that uh, standard algorithms as they are, they do not exactly fit into uh, the framework if you just bring it on like that. For example, this just, okay, so let me spend maybe a, a minute to think about it. So if you have to uh, implement quick sort on uh, Hadoop, uh, you, you, you. So the way quick sort works is you divide your data, and then you start merging your data together. Okay, in between you do certain operations on the data. So there is there is a very specific kind of a control which is imposed here, uh, as far as algorithm is concerned. If you try to do that uh, on MapReduce, uh, uh, 
you will miss miss those controls and actually you will end up uh, uh, doing uh, you will have to do a lot of uh, jobs which would have to be chained together and even then it's going to be very difficult to implement that <clears throat> let's see uh, some of the con constraints and the techniques which the framework provides us uh, and I'm sure you guys already know a few things about it or maybe everything about it so map tasks include rigidly defined stages that must, must work together in specific ways uh, but it's possible to recast your algorithms in this framework and solve problems at scale uh, so uh, and and actually as part of this course we are going to be uh, uh, implementing some of the graph algorithms and uh, one of the algorithms that will implement is a page rank algorithm and we'll see how we can implement uh, such complex algorithms on, on MapReduce. Although, uh, if you look at any of uh, uh, the graph algorithms, they do not fit exactly into the structure of this framework, but we can still use this framework if you understand uh, some of the patterns. Okay, so these are the constraints. Uh, Programmer has very little control over many aspects of the job execution. Uh, where a mapper or the reducer runs, when a mapper or the reducer begins or finishes, which input key value pairs are processed by a specific mapper, which intermediate key value pairs are processed by a specific mapper. Uh, you ideally would have liked to have such control in your hand, but that control is not provided to you. But, but, so those were the constraints, but it does have a lot of techniques and tools for you. And that's where uh, your, these algorithms, these frameworks excel. And you, you, these tools uh, help you do things in, in such ways that you, uh, uh, very complex kinds of algorithms actually can be fit into uh, uh, these patterns. For example, ability to construct complex data structure as key and values. Uh, uh, you will see these things being used as part of uh, uh, the filtering pattern and the summarization patterns. Uh, then you have user specific uh, initialization and termination code at the start and the end of MapReduce jobs. These are the start and the, the, the close things which, have, uh, which, which run before uh, each of uh, your map uh, jobs run. Uh, ability to control sort order of intermediate keys. Uh, uh, this is this is done through uh, the, the the sorting part that I talked about earlier. This is uh, uh, done by uh, using some of uh, your own comparators implemented. Ability to control the partitioning of the key space. You know this pretty well. So this is uh, the hashing uh, uh, which is done by the partitioner or by default. You can go ahead and change that behavior. So yes, uh, so there, there are some of the reasons uh, why you should definitely uh, learn about these patterns. So, uh, because uh, you, you could be writing different kinds of code. And uh, uh, for example, uh, some of the people who are involved in writing application code uh, and doing analytics uh, maybe on a log file. And uh, if, if that computation is not too complex, uh, then uh, some of these uh, uh, design patterns that we'll talk about, a lot of these things would uh, uh, fit in uh, uh, without much changes. They'll fit in without, of course, you'll have to make changes uh, based on uh, the domain in which you're working for. But uh, uh, as far as the pattern itself goes, uh, they would be quite apparent if you, if you, if you uh, are designing such, such code. Uh, but there are cases uh, where uh, uh, okay. So uh, uh, yeah. So uh, and but there, there, so that's that's not all. So there, there is there are very complex systems are made on top of uh, these MapReduce things. So for example, uh, think of uh, Nudge. Okay. So uh, initially, uh, that cutting had been writing Nudge uh, uh, not on MapReduce, but uh, he actually faced a lot of problems doing that. So he uh, later on. Uh, he shifted these things onto MapReduce, uh, and uh, uh, today it, it actually runs in MapReduce. Think of uh, a system like Mahout. Okay, so Mahout uh, again uh, runs on MapReduce, uh, 
but if you look at the crux of that algorithm, that algorithm is, is mostly about doing machine learning. All right, so, uh, uh, so uh, some of these very complex things have been adopted on MapReduce. Now, if you want to write a system like that, such complex systems, uh, so, so there, is, there is a domain knowledge involved over there, and then there is knowledge of being able to adapt that stuff onto this framework. Okay, and definitely if, if you understand MapReduce design patterns, it makes your job a little easier uh, than you would be without knowing these patterns. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, keep on sending them out. Uh, uh, at, at uh, different points in the webinar, probably I'll just have a look and maybe at the end of it, I will uh, try to answer some of those. Okay, so uh, I'm moving on to the next one here. Yes, so now we have seen why of the map reduce. Uh, let's see what are these MapReduce design patterns, okay, what types of patterns actually exist. And as I said earlier, uh, these, these, this is actually an evolving list and will keep on evolving uh, as inputs come in from uh, the users of MapReduce uh, or, or the tools which have been built. For example, PIG, PIG itself uh, is, is uh, one of the tools which drives uh, patterns into MapReduce. Uh, and then uh, of course, uh, some of the systems, for example, uh, uh, I'm not sure if Natch has driven any patterns into it, but systems like those also, uh, uh, based on the requirements, can drive some of uh, the evolution in this field. Okay, so, uh, uh, so, so one thing I would like to sp uh, specify, there, there is a book on MapReduce design patterns, and uh, a lot of this course I have based on that, and uh, these patterns are actually from uh, uh, that book and uh, that's uh, in the reference. So summarizing patterns uh, are basically patterns which uh, give you a very high level view of the data. So uh, you want to do high level analytics on, on something uh, before uh, you want to go deeper into understanding the data. Uh, so quickly you will do some of these summarization patterns and understand your data. Uh, what happens is so you, your actual data doesn't change, but uh, the view of the data that you get is, is a summarized view of the data. Uh, some of the patterns which uh, come into this, actually the filtering pattern, which I'll, uh, sorry, not the filtering pattern, the inverted index pattern which I'll talk about, is, is, is a kind of a summarization pattern. When we look at uh, uh, the filtering patterns, uh, these are, uh, by the, as, as the name itself specifies, uh, so filtering patterns uh, filter your data. These these don't change your data. They just filter your data. And one of the interesting patterns in the filtering pattern is uh, the Bloom filters. And uh, we will have a discussion on that uh, later in in the slides. Then we have the data organization patterns. Uh, these are patterns. Uh, uh, okay, uh, let me just uh, explain this with a little bit of example. So. Uh, uh, so, so the unstructured data you have out there, okay. Now, uh, for example, the data you get out of Twitter. Now, if, uh, or, or for example, uh, you, have, you have some 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 data coming out of Twitter, and then you have some data which is come out coming out of an RDBMS. You want to join these two things together and uh, put it in a hierarchical format so that uh, the processing on these things become faster. Uh, 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 so, so uh, generally, the very structure of the NoSQL databases. Okay, so uh, for example, as DFS, you can go ahead and store uh, structural data in HBase also. You can do that. So, uh, uh, so uh, for example, you started with uh, maybe two or three uh, RDBMS tables, and you wanted to keep all this data together. So, you move from a very structured data into a hierarchical sort of a data. These things are useful. Uh, 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 down the line for further processing. So, uh, so, so, so the thing is, uh, your uh, uh, these, these design patterns don't exist in isolation. Okay, so you do certain things uh, using these design patterns, and down the line you do certain 
further things on, on, on outputs from these design patterns. Okay, so data organization pattern is one of the patterns which sort of uh, changes the organizational data in such a way that it's uh, going to be useful for uh, uh, the pipeline of processes which come later down in the order. Okay, then we have the joint patterns. Uh, so uh, again, uh, joint patterns is about uh, you have multiple sources of data. Uh, you want to extract more value out of this, so you join these and do queries on it. So joint patterns are useful for that purpose. Meta patterns, so there are exactly patterns in, in the real sense of, sense of the word, but they are very useful because uh, uh, what you have in these patterns is, is more about uh, doing chaining of the jobs. Okay, so I was, I was talking about, uh, so, so in any complex system that you build, your one iteration which comes out of uh, uh, your map reduce job probably is not going to be enough for designing the whole system. Okay, so you will have to have uh, uh, a complex reorganization and combining of uh, the iterations which are produced by each of these. Uh, so meta patterns come use come in use over there. Then we have the input and output patterns. Uh, this these are uh, things which help so so help with uh, some of the tasks that you do with MapReduce. Uh, graph patterns interesting uh, and. Uh, also interesting from the point of view of the fact that uh, uh, we then the, the graph algorithms are not uh, very correctly suited for uh, implementing on on MapReduce, but then these patterns will help you resolve some of those problems. And actually, uh, as part of this course, you will do uh, an implementation of I, I think I just told you this so implementation of the page rank algorithm, and that will be. MapReduce, uh, uh, the graph algorithms in MapReduce. Uh, 